Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about projects for juniors. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, my question is what sort of project do you consider valuable enough to get a junior developer into the tech industry? Should the project be something viable for the company you're targeting to work at? No, uh, not unless you're planning on, I don't know, let's say for the sake of argument that you're a PhD student or like a master student or something like that. And let's say for the sake of argument that your thesis is on something that is, I don't know, something that would be very niched towards you getting a job in say a company like Google or Netflix or Amazon or it doesn't have to be at that level it can be any company that has a very a, 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 a few products or products that are very niched towards something highly technical well if that is the case and your goal is to get into one of those companies then for sure yes then you can go and do something like that but for the average software developer who is looking to create a portfolio uh, it's it's not really how do I put this it's very unlikely that you will be able to figure out something that is going to be viable for the company because the fact of the matter is that you don't know enough about the IT industry to most of the time at the very least to build something that is meaningful I mean there are exceptions to this I heard I I don't know if this is actually true but I did when I was in school I heard they told us a story about the autocomplete feature that you may know about where you, when you do a search uh, I think this was specifically on YouTube that uh, well this the story goes that that was originally created by a random like a kid like a teenager who realized that that could be a pretty nice feature to add to the YouTube website and so he submitted it as an idea and they actually offered him a job because of that thing I don't know if that's true but that is I mean that would be something an example of something that where you you figure out that this big company that you want to work for or whatever they have some feature and you can sort of enhance it and then you can submit it as part of like some CV or something like that um, and uh, that's probably going to be very flattering to them but uh, on average that's still not going to be the most likely now it's not going to be the thing that dictates whether or not you get the job it might it's sort of the thing it's like getting the foot your foot in the door but other things need to align as well your technical skills and your interviews and so forth see here's the thing those days well not not always but you know those days when you just had to know someone and that was it well yeah those days are sort of gone for us software developers uh, what I mean by that is not that it's not a good idea to have a network it's very good to have a network it's just that even if you let's say that you were my best friend and you came to me and said Frederick I want to work with you in 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 your uh, company right all I would be able to do and this is the norm is to put your name forward to my hiring manager and that person is still gonna put you through the technical interview they're still gonna put you through the code test you're gonna put you through all the races just as anybody else is there's no like in you know, nobody at this point is going to just let you in and one part is because the that's very dangerous uh, and the other part is that it's highly highly unfair to the people who have already gone through the, pro the process and most managers will not do this because of this exact thing uh, it's uh, there's always uh, in almost every IT company a process for screening people so what can you do then what should you focus on well what I usually say to people is that even if you create the best product in the world like it's really it's not a good investment for you to focus in general now on a specific company and whatever business they have unless as I said you really have your heart set on working in that specific company because you have no guarantees that they will even look at your portfolio 
that's one of those things, right? When you create a portfolio, you're just kind of hoping that their recruitment process is going to include the fact that they check your portfolio. And unless you know how to present this in a good way, they might not even care or they might not have time they might not it might be completely besides the point you might be you might have built them the next best feature that they could possibly imagine and they're still not going to hire you because the recruiter was busy that weekend or like that uh, friday and yeah no i don't have time to go through all of this and your and your cv says that you have no work experience so out you go because not every company is google not every company is as they say they are on like the, the their blogs and so forth, unfortunately. And um, just as uh, with every single company and every single person out there, you have good days and you have bad days. And there are things that work and there are things that don't work. And that's unfortunately a little bit unfair, but that's reality. So what I argue to you is that you should adopt a strategy when it comes to portfolio projects that follows uh, a few, I have two rules that I I say like this these are in my opinion the silver bullet rules that will maximize your benefit overall it will be the best thing that you can do and I will explain why so the rules are very simple follow these two rules for every single portfolio project you ever make uh, and I'll explain why number one make it a real thing make it something that is intended to be used it's fine I mean if you're a complete beginner you've never built anything in your life start out with the toys start out with making tiny little CLI adventures with if statements or the to do apps or things like that these low-end things go for it or maybe some small little computer game or so forth and save it I mean it's quirky and if it's uh, something that gets extra nice it might be something that's worth talking about in conversation I've made like half-baked finished projects that have come up in conversations and interviews just because it was a fun thing it never went anywhere I've made a few small like silly little computer games or mobile apps games and things like that it's not the thing that's gonna get me the job but it does show the thing that is important and the most like almost every single company who's hiring juniors they're looking for two things primarily and that is number one or uh, well, in a in a junior uh, in a junior candidate number one passion number two potential not ex like exclusively in that order but those are the two things that matter and you can communicate those two things you're doing that just by making things that are real in some way you're proving that you're willing to do the extra like go the extra distance you, you are passionate about software development you're interested in doing things and you make things you have ideas etc etc and you have the aptitude to actually learn this stuff on your own so with a little bit of coaching you're going to be a lot of benefit to the company that's what you're selling so number one, that's the rule number one, make something that is meant to be used in the real world. Number two, make it useful. Make it something that has a value. Uh, it's fine to create very visually nice striking static websites and so forth and that there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's just that that's also something that literally every single person does. Uh, and if you want to really kick it up a notch, make something relevant start your own little startup a side thing like where you build a mobile app with the, the intention of releasing it to I don't know it doesn't matter if it's five people or a million people uh, it's something real it's something worth talking about in an interview and it's something that is going to go over really well because it shows that you you know how to build real things and that is at the end of the day what matters to the vast majority of uh, IT companies. Uh, it's the thing that they are doing and it's the thing that reflects what everybody else is doing so that's of course the thing that they would like to see the most and I promise you if you just follow those two rules you will immediately set yourself above like the, the vast majority of candidates uh, at least based on what I've seen over the years. So what I want you to take away from this is that there are no silver bullets. Uh, I don't think it's a good idea for you to uh, unless you're looking to go into a very specific company to create products like where you try to like niche it towards them uh, the reason is because they might not even look at the project that's kind of the thing and that's why I argue that if you follow my two rules there is a secondary benefit 
to your portfolio projects and that is that you will actually learn more your experience will go up it the the things that you will learn from following these two rules it it's actually the closest thing to doing real work in the actual industry and that is a very valuable thing for you it's cool I mean if you have some fun ideas and you want to make something a little bit toyish or something that is not like super serious but it's fun just do it you're gonna learn something from it but if you focus on number one make real things things that are meant to be used in the real world and number two, make it something that is actually useful, something that produces some type of value. It doesn't have to be like a gigantic thing. It just has to be something that has some type of value that some people can use and see a benefit to. If you follow those th two things, then you are the clo you're doing the closest thing to doing the work that we do in the industry. That's what we do. That's what all of the mid-levels and juniors who got a job and the seniors, that's what we're all doing. It's the same deal. It's just that you're doing it for yourself. And if you can do that, you will actually both build building up your CV, increasing your chances to get a job when you're going to an interview because you have more stuff on the CV and you have more things to talk about in the interview. And you will at the same time actually further your own experience because you, now you're doing things that are real, which is the best thing ever if you want to get a, a professional software developer's job. Have a great day.